Good morning and welcome to worship on this fifth Sunday after Epiphany. It's so good to have you worshiping with us this morning, and we have a whole host of announcements this morning. So let's buckle up and dive into our announcements before we begin worship today. The first announcement is, for the first time in months, we have an empty Neighbors, Inc. barrel. Again, we keep a barrel for donations out in our narthex, and this month we are collecting pancake mix, and so far, the barrel is empty. So, trusting that you all are on top of it, we ask that you bring in your pancake mix donations, and we are looking for 150. That's our goal for February. So as always, thank you for participating in that monthly food drive. And we do have Minnesota Food Share Month coming up in March, so keep an eye out for more details about how we will do that this year. Next announcement is the offering envelopes have arrived. So for those who use their offering envelopes and get those yearly, we have them all here in the office. They're all lined up on tables in the narthex. So we invite you to come on in and grab those offering envelopes. If you would like us to deliver them to you, we have a group of people who are ready and willing to do that. So just go ahead and give the office a call or email us and let us know and we can bring you your offering envelopes. We have an exciting youth event coming up. It's fun to say that. It's been a while since we've had one of those. Uh, but February 13th, on Saturday at 11 o'clock, we will be meeting at Green Acres Recreational Center and going snow tubing. So this is for all of our youth, 6th through 12th grade. Uh, there is still some time to sign up, so please, as soon as possible, let me know, because uh, we need to reserve all of our spots. Uh, and again, that's youth snow tubing on Saturday, February 13th. And believe it or not, we are approaching the season of Lent. So that kicks off on Wednesday, February 17th. We will have an online Ash Wednesday service that premieres at 10 a.m. And then we will also have our evening Wednesday worship on Ash Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Again, for that in person, we have a limited number of seats. So we're asking that everybody signs up in advance. We also have, here in the office, uh, some ashes as well as some sticker crosses uh, so that you can participate this year in the imposition of ashes uh, for that wonderful Ash Wednesday worship service. So again, please come in and grab those or let us know if we can hand deliver them to you. And as usual, we have midweek Lenten worship services. We'll continue to meet in person on Wednesdays at 6.30 through the season of Lent, and we are going to try something new. We are going to Facebook Live those worship services. Uh, so those who have Facebook, you can also tune in on Facebook while it's happening and watch our Lenten services. Uh, we'll get you some more details as we get closer to that, uh, but it'll be interesting to try something new and again worship in a new way. Also for Lent, we've got lots of stuff going on. We are going to start a Lenten devotional practice. So every Monday in the season of Lent, starting February 15th, those who would like will receive an email with a brief video and the scripture for the week and two discussion questions. We ask that you ponder those materials throughout the week, and then every Sunday at 9.30 before worship, We'll meet on Zoom to discuss those materials and pray together. So it's going to be an, another interesting way to gather, to receive God's word, and to be together. So please let us know if you'd like to participate in that Lenten devotional uh, each week. We have a couple more announcements. One of those is we have a wonderful worship and music team that has been working so hard this year to make sure that all of this happens, that we continue to worship together, that we can keep engaging one another around God's word and at God's table. If you are interested in participating in that team, we would love to have more people be a part of that. So you can reach out to Paul Dunlop 
or to myself. If you'd be interested, you can even attend a meeting and just try it out if you'd like. Uh, but we would love to have more people participate in that wonderful team. And last but not least is, of course, our list of thank yous. We want to thank Bobby Meyer for being our reader today, Linda Hansen for being our assisting minister, Dan Zarich for his beautiful music, and of course, Paul Dunlop for putting all of this together. We thank you for being with us this morning. And with all of that, let's take a deep breath and prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. continue this morning with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, you are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are all called to be the beloved community of the living out of Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today's reading is from Isaiah. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its habitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to live in. Who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing? Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown. Scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth. When he blows upon them and they wither, and the tempest carries them off like the stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? I lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them by name. Because he is great in strength, might in power, not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by God? Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the end of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. He understandably is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths who faint and be weary and the young will fall exhausted. But those who went for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. It's time for our children's sermon. So I invite all of the youth to come forward a little bit closer to the screen as we share in the good news of Jesus this morning. This morning I wanted to bring our church iPad, right? Here's our iPad that we use here at church for different things. And I was wondering, for school and online and even playing games, do you guys have an iPad or maybe you play on a phone or use your phone or a computer? Right, we have all of this technology that helps us Again, do school from a distance, even worship together from a distance, and it helps us have fun, play games, listen to music. But these devices, what happens after you use it for a really long time? Right, maybe you've had that warning before that pops up that says, low battery. Right, these these devices, they have just a certain amount of battery, and after a while, it's going to run out of battery, and then what do you do? Right, you might have a charger like this. You plug into the wall, then you plug into your device, and then it recharges. Right, almost all of our electronics need to be recharged, get their battery filled back up, so that we can continue to use them. Well, I brought this this morning because did you know that you and I 
are kind of like these devices. Right. We can run and play and have fun and study and worship together, but eventually our energy gets kind of low and we get a little tired and we need to recharge. So how do you guys recharge? Do you plug into an outlet and get your batteries charged up? No, I don't think so. I, I think that when we need to recharge, we often will eat food, right? We need to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and good snacks. We might even need to drink lots of water to stay charged up. And certainly, all of us need good sleep to stay recharged. So I've got a challenge for you this morning. I want you to use your hand, and you're going to show me how charged you feel this morning. So take your arm and put it all the way down. That would be zero, like you are so tired, you're ready to go to sleep. Put your hand all the way up. It would be 100% charged. You are ready to go run and play and have fun. Kind of anywhere in between there. Where are you today? Are you at zero or 100? Go ahead and put your hand where you're charged today. Very nice, right? So there's times when we're all over the place. When we get tired, there's times when we're excited and ready to go. Well, did you know that one of the greatest ways for us to stay charged and energetic and ready to go is to stay connected to God. Yeah. In our gospel reading today, Jesus even steps aside to pray and stay connected to God. Even Jesus took time to recharge. All right, so it's important for us to remember that we need to pray to stay connected to God to worship, to read our Bibles, to talk about God, to do communion and baptism, all of those things help us stay connected to God and stay charged, and God keeps us full whenever we need it. So this week, as you use different devices and you plug them in to charge, I want you to remember to plug yourself into God. Remember to pray to come to God with anything and everything, and God will charge you up. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for all of the devices that help us stay connected and learn and have fun. We thank you for giving us power and electricity to keep those devices charged and running. And God, we give you thanks for keeping us charged and running. We thank you for always being there for us whenever we pray or read your word or worship together. We thank you for filling us up with your love and your energy. Please be with us this week and every week. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our gospel reading for this morning comes from Mark, the first chapter. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew. 
with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door, and he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon, his companion, hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I have come to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for your word, for your living word that brings life to us. We ask that you meet each and every one of us exactly where we are today. That you would break into our hearts, open our minds to receive your word. We give you thanks for bringing us life and grace and forgiveness every day. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Having reliable transportation is such an important part of life, right? It helps you get to work or to run errands. Of course, helps you get to church when we worship in person. But especially in a state like Minnesota, where we have snow and cold, it is so important to have good transportation. I remember the first car that Rose and I got as a married couple, a forest green Ford Escape. Now, we actually got this car from my mother-in-law, and Rose was so excited to get it because she helped her mom pick it out many years before. Now, this forest green Ford Escape was a great car. It was reliable and trustworthy. It helped both Rose and I get to work, get to class, drive around Seattle, Washington for many years. And besides a few tune-ups and a few oil changes and repairs here and there, it was a very trusty car. So when we moved to Minnesota, we put this Ford Escape on a U-Haul trailer and brought it out with us. Now, I'm not sure if it was a coincidence of coming to a different state or if this reliable car just wasn't used to cold weather. But as soon as we got to Minnesota, we began to have car trouble. Now, I know that there's some folks out there who can relate to having car trouble. Our Ford Escape started with just a few minor repairs and then the front brakes needed to be replaced. So we spent time and money replacing those, and then a few months later, the rear brakes needed to be replaced. So again, spent time and money working on that. And just a few months after that, Rose and I drove out to dinner with a few friends. We ate dinner and had a great time and came back to the car, and the car would not start. That forest green Ford Escape had enough. Now, if you've ever had a used car or kept a car for many, many years, you know that over time, 
things begin to wear out, break down, and inevitably, cars need to be repaired and renewed. The same is true for us as human beings. We go through life and we begin to wear out. We need to be renewed and restored. Now we are still in the season of epiphany, the season of revealing and discovering Jesus Christ. Last week, Mark's gospel revealed that Jesus is in control. In this week's gospel, Mark reveals to us that Jesus renews the sick, Jesus renews the struggling, the weary, and the faint. Our gospel reading today picks up right where we left off in the synagogue last week. Jesus is with his new disciples in the synagogue. It says, they left and went to Simon and Andrew's house. When they arrive at the house, Simon tells Jesus that his mother-in-law is sick in bed with a fever. Jesus goes to her, takes her by the hand, and lifts her up. It says that immediately her fever lifted and left her. She was renewed by just the touch of Jesus' hand. She was renewed and felt so good that she began to host those gathered. She began to serve Jesus and the disciples food and take care of them. This word of Jesus' miraculous healing spread to all of the neighbors. It says that the whole city was gathered at the door so that those who were sick could be healed by Jesus. That evening, Jesus cast out many demons and healed those of many diseases. In the morning after that busy night, Jesus goes to a dark, deserted place to pray. In that moment when Jesus is praying and recharging, Simon hunts him down because there are so many more people at their house looking for renewal. Jesus says, let's go on to the neighboring towns so I can continue to proclaim the good news and to renew those in need. Jesus renews the sick. Jesus renews the struggling, the weary, and the faint. So how are you this morning? Truly, how are you doing? Are you feeling well and keeping it all together? Or are you feeling worn down and exhausted? Are you feeling encouraged this morning and full of hope? Or are you discouraged and struggling? Do you have all that you need for today? Or are you finding it difficult to survive and get by? Well, no matter where you are today, Isaiah 40 reminds us that everyone, absolutely everyone, grows weary. Everyone at some point in time gets faint and exhausted, and all people need renewal. We all begin to wear out and break down, and inevitably, we all need to be renewed and restored. And we can't do that on our own. We need help. Isaiah 40 reminds us of who God is. It reveals to us in our moment of need exactly who God is. It says, have you not known, have you not heard that God is everlasting? God is the creator of all the earth, and God does not grow weary, and God does not faint. 
Jesus Christ is God's presence in your life. Jesus Christ is the good news that restores and renews you. When you grow faint, and you will grow faint, Jesus gives you God's power. When you feel powerless, Jesus gives you God's strength. In all things, we wait for the Lord. That means that our hope and our expectation and what we lean on is Jesus Christ, the one who renews and strengthens us. This morning, I want you again to grab your Bible or pull it up on your phone. I'll give you a second to find your Bible. For some of you that may have found it quickly and those who are still looking, once you find it, I want you to turn to Isaiah 40, chapter 31. Again, Isaiah 40, chapter 31. If you need to pause this, feel free to do so. But follow along as I read. Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. Let this be your prayer this week. Again, I encourage you each day to turn to Isaiah 40, 31. Read this to yourself every day reminding you that when you get weary and faint, Jesus is with you. Jesus Christ is there bringing you strength and power. And that through the promise of Christ, you have life. That you will be renewed and mount up with wings like eagles. Let this be your prayer this week. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the death, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, we ask that you guide and heal this world of ours back to a healthy world. We ask for health and peace and justice to be restored to this world. We ask and pray that our leaders near and far work together to solve hunger and homeless issues. And we pray for peace daily. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our country for strength to guide us with the COVID vaccinations so that we may be able to see and be with each other again soon. Lord, we pray for wisdom as we continue to reopen the doors to more workers and for our students as they return back in-person education and for our teachers and other staff members. We pray for our community, the hunger issues, homelessness, and for all who feel overwhelmed, hopeless, or forgotten. Be with us all as we face our own challenges. Each day is a new beginning. Help us to rest our faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for God's peace and comfort for the families of those who have entered the church eternal. We pray for the family and friends of Rita Jacobson, the mother of Emily Heiser, who passed away in January. We pray for God's health and healing for Connie McAllister of Sunshine, Kay Castle, Leon, Bernice, Marlis Tiedman, Marlene Astrike, Marlis Cornelison, Maria and Jeremy, Irene, Justin, Bobby, Debbie, Joel, Liz, Colette, Ken, and Patty Jo. We pray God's strength and encouragement for our homebound. Doug, Ruth, Dorothy, Janie, Gloria, Luther, Joan, Claudia, Stephen, Millie, Carol, Joanne, Margot, Doris, and Bev. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. And also, please at this time, share the peace with others.
Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us. Like a mother receives her child with arms open wide, nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with the same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As you partake in communion this morning, hear these words. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and to serve others in your name. Amen. Receive the blessing of our Lord. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in God's grace. Amen. teach me what I need to know. Guide and lead me where I need to go. In everything I say and do, teach me how to
sound of your voice fills me with comfort and joy. Now I know I must stop listening. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.